Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be playing Vayne. I'm gonna be explaining the build part in the beginning of the video and uh, if you don't care about the build you can find timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay. By the way, in yesterday's video I asked you guys do you want to see Vayne or Ezreal? 100 and 146 people said Ezreal and 161 people said Vayne. I am, however, going to give you guys one more chance to get an Ezreal video. I'll mention later on in this video how you can do it. So, you know, keep in mind later on in the video, I'll mention how you guys can still get an Ezreal video. Okay, about Vayne. How the hell do you build Vayne? And actually, during this gameplay, I'm going to give you guys so many tips about how to survive in the early game on Vayne. It's, you know, you should really watch this video. Okay, now we're talking about the build. And honestly, I did try some builds. I like I've tried um, Blade of the Rune King. I've e even tried Trinity Force. I I want to say immediately that I don't like Trinity Force. It's not nice on Vayne. It's just I don't like it. And Blade of the Rune King is definitely the best item because. Um, while it may not give you the best damage in the early game, the passive is super nice, like, you know, the 6% damage of the enemy's HP, but especially stealing the movement speed of the enemy. And later on during the gameplay, I'm going to be explaining to you why this passive is so important on Vayne. So start with the Blade of the Rune King. Keep in mind that you're incredibly weak when, you're, when you have a Blade of the Rune King, like, you're not strong here yet. After that, it's situational. You can either go for a Static Shift or Infinity Edge, one of the two. Do you just need big damage? Go for Infinity Edge. Do you want to have like poke damage? Get Static Shift. I want to mention that you should never, ever, under any circumstance, get a Rapid Fire Cannon on Vayne. <clears throat> never, ever, ever get it, okay? Never. After the Blade of the Rune King, um, make sure to get Boots, by the way. Get Boots of Speed, of course, the first one Boots. But here it depends. Does the enemy have a lot of stuns? Please, guys, get the Mercury Threats. If they have a lot of attack damage, get plated steel caps otherwise get glutinous griefs okay keep that in mind what i just said so after this item static shift or infinity edge of course you're gonna get the other one so you're gonna have these three items as your first items you can also get a phantom dancer second item okay get this if the enemy has a lot of diving champions they have evelyn they have akali they have you know diving champions then you can also get a phantom dancer second this is going to give you a little less damage like actually way less damage but, a, but more survivability because this is going to give you bonus uh, shield when you have low hp right so keep that in mind you can either get an infinity edge you can get a phantom dancer or you can get a static shift as your second item it's all good it's just situation keep that in mind Okay, so once you finished all these items, these four items, like this is already the huge, like this is when you get huge on vein. By the way, another th quick tip for you, make sure you get an infinity edge third item. You never want to get these two first. Never, never, never. Because of course, infinity edge gives you 230% crit damage. So this is always going to be worth way more as your second crit item. Keep that in mind, okay? Never skip the infinity edge. Always get it on vein. Now, as your last item, here you can see a mortal reminder. Um, this is what I likely go for on Vayne because you know you'll shred through the tanks. Do good pick when you when you pick Vayne. It's often against tanks, right? But um, if you don't actually need it, you can get a guardian angel as well. Another tip that I have, yes, actually there's more. Like another tip that I have for you is if the enemy has a lot of healing, like Sona, Soraka, whatever, you know, if they have a lot of healing. You can choose to do this. So finish your Blade of the Rune King. And after that, buy Executioner's Calling. Only this item. Don't finish the Mortal Reminder. So after your... Uh, here, I'm going to show you what you should do. So after your Blade of the Rune King, uh, get this. You see my build right now? This is a build that you should go for against a lot of healing. Just get an Executioner after your Blade of the Rune King. And then, you know, continue your build. Get a Static Shift or whatever. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, that was pretty much it about the Vayne build. So, uh, yeah, about the enchantments... Um, you can either get Quicksilver Enchant. I really like Quicksilver Enchant because, you know, you're going to be diving the enemy's heart. And when they heart CC you, you can get out of it with Quicksilver, right? You can also get Stasis Enchant if you feel like you need Stasis Enchant, of course. And actually, there's another one that I personally really like, but I never see anyone use, which is Locket. Locket is obviously going to give you the Locket Shield, which is actually really really good in the later game like let's say you're diving hard with with a vein you can just trigger lock it to not only shield yourself but also obviously shield your teammates which is really really good actually so keep that in mind you can also get a locket 
Okay, about the roots, Conqueror. Now, if you have a really hard matchup and you're not comfortable on Vayne, listen to what I'm saying, if you're not comfortable on Vayne, get a fleet footwork. This is gonna help you survive the lane. But if you feel like you know you're if you feel like you're a good vein, get conqueror. Basically, that's what, what you should choose for either Conqueror if you feel comfortable on Vayne or Fleet Footwork if you're playing Vayne for the first time, second time, or you know, you really feel like you're gonna get destroyed in your lane. I almost always go Conqueror. As your second rune, Gathering Storm, you know, Vayne, late game, Gathering Storm, late game. And here, Loyalty, this is the, loyalty is really really nice for the laning phase because in the lane you're gonna be very squishy and you know this is gonna make you and your support way tankier. However, you can also go for Spirit Walker or you can go for Hunter Titan. Hunter Titan if the enemy has a lot of stuns, for, of course. Like Hunter Titan is good for the late game, but the problem is early game, of course. Like you and your support are gonna get absolutely smashed and that's why loyalty is gonna be super nice for you and your support. And here, see, okay. If you're a real chat vein player, go for Pack Hunter. This is what I do, uh, but I want to say that Sweet Tooth is better. Because, of course, you're going to get destroyed in the early game and Sweet Tooth is going to help you. But, as I said, if you're a real chat vein player, get Pack Hunter. Because Pack Hunter is going to give you 2% even more, you know, even more movement speed when moving towards enemies. And, of course, the gold. But, as I said, I really recommend you to get Sweet Tooth. This is just my personal preference. Get Sweet Tooth, I go for Pack Hunter. Of course, as your spells, Barrier and Flesh. So let's get into the Vayne gameplay, guys. Okay, I have an incredible game for you guys today. Absolutely incredible. You really, really, really want to watch this to the late game, okay? J just saying. So, okay, I have a few things to say about the Ezreal. So I, sa I told you guys that I'm going to give you guys one more chance to get an Ezreal video. If this video reaches 1,000 likes, 1,000. I will also learn Ezreal and bring out an Ezreal video. Like, Jesus Christ, I've played every single ADC now almost. It's actually crazy. Just because I made this idiotic community post, you know, like, yeah, if this post gets 500 likes, I'm going to play all these ADCs, blah, blah, blah. The post has like 1,000 likes right now. And then Vayne and Ezreal as well. It's like crazy, like all the ADCs. So keep that in mind. You know, also the skin giveaway. So make sure you put down a comment under the video. Take a look at this. We are laning against Twisted Faith and Jin. There is probably not a harder lane than this. This lane is incredibly aggressive. So I really want you to take a look at how I play against it. So as you can see, what I'm doing, I'm playing safe. Of course I'm playing safe, right? I'm just backing off and getting the last hits when I can. Here, like as you can see, I'm not able to get the last hit because this Twisted Faith is just like hard going on me. Oh my god. And here I actually made a mistake, you know. I went way too far. So when you play Vayne in the early game, as you can see, oh my god, you're gonna get destroyed. Okay, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. So what you want to do is, I already made a few mistakes here. And let me point them out to you. Which is going for minions I shouldn't go for. As a Vayne, you should sometimes take the L, right? The, like here, look at this. I'm being very wary of them. So I'm, I'm keeping my finger on the barrier button in case they dive me. This is how you play on Vayne, you know. Stay back, take as much farm as you can, but don't overextend for farm. Like here again, as you can see, not overextending. I used my barrier when he flashed. As I said, like I had my finger ready on my barrier. And the Seraphim actually did a beautiful second ability too. So this is perfect. What we're doing now is perfect. I farmed pretty well, you know, pretty, pretty well, like, okay. And as you can see, like, I'm trying to find opportunities to go back, but I'm not actually going back because I have to farm, right? So here, we have a free lane. And when you have a free lane, take as much farm as you can. You know, the enemy Twisted Faith went back, so, you know, we're taking the free farm. And here, this is not good. You never want to fight with a vein in your team. Like, I'm pinging my team, don't go in, don't go in, don't go in, please. Here I actually had a beautiful stun, but again, I'm vain. No damage at all. So, they, like this is obviously the big, big problem with vain. You are utterly trash in the early game, and you're gonna lose lane. You're not gonna be able to help your team. You know, your support is gonna get mad at you. Everything, everything is bad. As you can, as you can see, I only have 1,900 gold. However, it's okay. Why is it okay? Because of Vayne's late game, of course. 
So let me talk about a few strengths that Vayne has when you reach level 5. Because when you reach level 5, it all changes. Obviously, you're still, you're still very weak. Like, not pretty weak, but very weak. But there is one thing that you're very strong at. Which is 1v1s. Yes, that's right. When you reach level 5, you're probably going to be able to 1v1 every single ADC in the game. Now, you might think, like, what the hell are you saying? Vayne level 5 1v1? Yes. So the way that you do it is use your ult. Okay, let me let me kind of explain to you how you do this. And I, I, also, I will also do it in this game. So you're going to see how I do it too. So when you're in a 1v1 situation, look at your map first. Make sure that it is actually a 1v1. Because if the enemy ganks you, of course it's bad. Like here, look at this. Oh, I actually saved the Seraphim beautifully. Oh my god. Wow, we got wrecked. So yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, make sure it's a 1v1. So let's say it's a 1v1. So if it's 100% a 1v1, use your ult. What do you do then? You use your first ability, go into the enemy and just destroy him. Use your second ability as well to heal up and have more attack speed. And trust me, you're going to win the 1v1. If it's an actual 1v1, you are going to win it. If you use your ultimate and even bonus points if you're able to stun the enemy against the wall. If you do that, you're absolutely going to kill them. 100%. Okay, so here I don't have my Blade of the Moon King. But I'm still going for the dragon because, you know, this is kind of our chance. We can go for it. And as you can see, we got it. Now we have to go back. So with a vein, you're likely going to lose first dragon. So it's actually okay to take the 50-50s. Because we had an advantage here at the dragon. Like all of our teammates were here. And, the, you know, the enemy was not there. The only thing that could have happened is the enemy jungler trying to steal it. So what do you do then? Go for the dragon. And if you lose it, it's okay. You know, at least you tried. Because you're probably not going to be able to take a fight at dragon. Because you're vain. You're an absolute trash. So what we did here was beautiful. We just secured the dragon. And this was really, really, really good. Okay. Again, take a look at how I'm laning. Just relaxing, you know, your vein. You don't need to do anything. Just farm and don't die. Like as you can see, I have zero deaths. Perfect. Keep it like this. Don't die. <laughs> Just don't die. And if you die, oh, take a look at this. I see him alone. And we just popped his flash. This is what I mean, guys. When you see someone alone, you can win the fight. Look at this. Boom. I actually went flashed in, but unfortunately, it's not quite enough. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's not enough. Oh, God. Oh, the Galio did beautifully, though. And I actually dashed away um, from the enemy. So, another tip that I have for you when playing Vayne is use your dash well. So, how do you use your dash well? Uh, don't just dash because you want to dash, right? You actually have to dash to a certain direction to avoid the enemy. Or to chase the enemy. One of the two. You need to think by yourself. Um, can I dodge an enemy ability with the dash? If yes, do it. Like, let, let's say Ezreal's first ability. You can dodge it with your dash. Let's say Blitzcrank Hook. You can again dodge it with your dash. Keep all this in your mind. Vayne is a very, very hard champion. But very rewarding if you play her well. Very, very rewarding. So, um, don't just randomly dash. You can either chase the enemy when you're dashing. You can dodge an ability. Or you can just dash away from an enemy, right? Like as you could see, uh, as you saw a few minutes ago, I dashed away from the enemy Katarina, so she wouldn't be able to hit me anymore. And as you can see in this game, I'm going for the uh, Mercury Threats. Why? Because they have a Twisted Faith. The Twisted Faith has a huge stun, and I just want to avoid that stun, right? So I got a Mercury Threat. <coughs> Look at this, alone, 1v1. What do I do in a 1v1? I fight. He cannot do anything. He cannot do anything. Did you just see what I did with this Jin? I absolutely destroyed him. This, these are the win conditions of Vayne, guys. You can like you can win fights in the mid game, and um, the way that you do it is a one v one. So when we talk about late game Vayne, it's a little different. However, let's take a look at what's gonna happen here. Actually, they're ganking me, but the Galio is here. It's still it's kind of hard to fight, but look at this. I'm just destroying them on that vein. And as you can see, another very important thing. Oh, look at this. Wow, the Seraphim just completely entered her ult. But another very, very important thing on vein. 
Ooh. Jesus, they just cannot kill me. But a very important thing is focus one target. Don't switch targets, okay? Please don't switch targets. Focus one target because you have to hit one target three times in a row to deal the true damage. If you switch targets, your stacks are going to reset. So make sure you really try your best to hit the same target when you're playing Vayne. Just kill one enemy. See, another thing is your ultimate gets bonus duration. Your ultimate gets bonus duration when you kill an enemy. Actually, here I would just completely int it. Wow, that was really stupid. Like, I dived against three enemies as a mid-game vein. You obviously cannot do that. You're just gonna die. <clears throat> yeah, this is pretty bad. This is pretty, pretty bad. Let's take a look at what my team is gonna do. Oh, they lost the dragon. That's so sad. I actually... Mm. Oops. I need to turn on do on disturb actually, but it's fine. Okay, yeah, here we're kind of inting, but it's still okay. So, when you're playing Vayne, make sure you have your ultimate ready before a fight as well, because your ultimate uh, makes you invisible when you use your first ability, and it gives you huge damage. Like, this is yet another win, con win condition from Vayne, your ultimate. You know, don't be thinking like, yeah, I'm super strong anyways, and going in without your ult, because your ult is like a big part of your damage, okay? Keep that in mind. <clears throat> wow, my team is actually trolling. So also, your third ability. This is also a thing that I really want to talk about when you're playing Vayne, because this ability can also be used in many different ways. First of all, stun an enemy against a wall. Of course, you know, when you can find an opportunity, stun the enemy against the wall. Just like this. And it's an e easy kill? Easy kill. As you can see, the stun is really big, actually. Like, when you stun an enemy into the wall, the duration is really long. I think it's like 1.5 seconds or something. Another way to use your push is, let's say an enemy hard dives you. What can you do? Push them back. Of course, you know, it's like a safe ability for yourself. You can just push them back. Okay, let's take a look here. It's true that both of them are here. I'm kind of thinking about taking the fight. But I waited for the Vukong to go back, and I just stunned her into the wall. And this should be a free kill. Like, there is no way that Katarina survives that. There is no way. The, the way that I did that is I just waited for the Vukong to backport so I could get a free kill on the Katarina. It was actually very smart. And as you can see, it's really, really important to utilize your third ability to stun the enemy. This is like, your, this is actually your only stunning. Like, here, boom, again, another stun. And we just killed the Jax because of my play. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my god, the Evelyn just... Oh, this Evelyn just... What did she do? She just used her ult, left the Baron at like 200 HP, and gave a free smite to the enemy. What? Oh, that is so bad. That is so damn bad. <laughs> uh, you're gonna see more from this Evelyn in the later game. It's actually hilarious what's gonna happen. This game is also very long, so it's gonna be a very spicy video and a spicy late game because very late game is very, very interesting to see, of course. <clears throat> so here I got the red buff and I'm ready to fight. I have my ultimate. I have everything ready. I'm level 12. I want to fight, right? Like, I really want to fight in the game right now. So my team is actually taking a fight without me, though, which is kind of stupid. But here, I should be able to clean up, right? Because I'm vain, and let's take a look what's going to happen. Unfortunately, I am not able to clean up. Like, I really need my team, and this is another mistake that I see a lot of vain players make. So what I just did is, um, I got way too cocky. I went in like an idiot without a team. So when you're playing Vayne, it's actually very, very important to have your team around you because your team has to waste time. As a Vayne, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you have to focus one target. Of course, if you're in a 1v4 situation, it's going to be a little hard to focus one target. So you really need your teammates to waste time. Like, what I just did here is a thing that I see a lot of Vayne players do. You know, which is going in 1v5, 1v4, thinking that they can just carry the game by themselves just because they're ahead. No, guys, you cannot carry the game by yourself. You still need your team to waste time. Please, guys, don't make this mistake that I just did. Let's take a look at what's going to happen. Here, I have my team here. So this should be way easier, right? We're still losing the fight, however. Well, we're doing okay, actually. 
Oh my god, I got wrecked. Oh, the game is getting turned. This game is getting turned. And it all started with the Baron Steel and with my mistakes as well. So, I want to tell you guys, it's okay because you are vain. When you're playing vain, don't be, don't be thinking like, oh no, I'm dying, blah, blah, blah. Think about late game. Like, try to make a strategy. How do I win the late game? Like, what can I do to win this game? Because you are an ultimate late game champion. There is almost no champion that's better than you in the late game. Maybe Ezreal, but still, you know, you're vain. You can hard carry a game. So here I was thinking, hmm, what is our win condition here? I am vain. I have late game, of course. But how do we win a fight? So what my, what I, what my win condition was here, what I thought is, I need my Fiora and Evelyn to go in. Then I go in as well. And then on top of that, we have Galio. Galio has his ultimate, which is very, very nice for me because it's, it's you know, with Galio's ultimate, we can buy a lot of time because he's either going to knock them up or, you know, they're going to spread up. So make this game plan in your head when you're playing Vayne because trust me, guys, Vayne is not like Jinx or Kai'Sa. Vayne is really, really hard to pull off, like really hard. So you really need a game plan. Think what you need to do. Like maybe maybe you need to stun a certain enemy. Like maybe you need to stun the enemy Evelyn, for example. And you know, what I'm trying to say is you really need a plan and execute your plan. So here we're starting Baron. This is really really good because we can force a fight here. It's a 4v5. We have Evelyn. Evelyn can easily secure Baron with ultimate. And she got the Baron. Very, very nice. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen here. This was a really, really nice call. Oh, really, really, really nice call. So, the, the reason that this was a nice call is because... Oh my god. I'm just steamrolling this team right now. So, the reason that it was a nice call is because the enemy was in the top lane. One of the enemies was in the top lane. And we could just force the Baron. Like, look at my damage though. What? Crazy damage. <laughs> uh, so, what we need to do now is push all lanes. Like, push top lane, push mid lane, and push bot lane. We shouldn't all group in mid lane because they can actually defend. So unfortunately, all my teammates are grouping mid. One guy should go to bot lane. Like that's really important here. When you get Baron, it's often the best call to push one top lane, one bot lane, three mid lane. Like look, they're kind of like, you know, it's okay what they're doing. But we could have gotten way more out of this. We could have gotten so much pressure. Like top lane, mid lane, bot lane. Crazy, crazy pressure. But unfortunately, again, my team didn't go for it. Which is pretty stupid. And here I make a mistake. Oof. But I actually redeemed myself by still getting a kill out of it. But it was still a mistake. You know, it was still a mistake. But if my teammates pushed the bot lane as well, they wouldn't have been able to rotate as two people in my lane. That's why it's, you know, that's why I'm, I'm saying here. It's often the best call to push one top lane, one bot lane, and three mid lane. Like, we're just wasting the bot lane now. It's free push. It's free pressure. So, so stupid from our team, actually. Really not the right call. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm mentioning here to my team. Wait for me. Fight at the dragon. We have Evelyn. Like, the advantage that you have at Evelyn. So, yeah, here my game plan was do objectives. Because Evelyn can use her ultimate and smite. And when she does that, she's going to outsmite every single champion. No one can outsmite an Evelyn. Unless, of course, she does it like an absolute idiot. But this is high elo, so I'm expecting my Evelyn to not make the mistake again, right? Look at what they just did. Oh my god, they just fought for no reason. I just told them, don't fight. Like, I just told them to not fight. And what did they do? They fought. Like, idiot. And here, of course, you know, I just destroyed the Jax. And this is where the Blade of the Rune King is very strong, you know. You can catch up to any enemy. Like... This is so stupid. My team made such a big mistake. And here I'm telling the Seraphim, you know what? Screw my team. We can just I can just 1v5. Well 2v5 actually. Let's take a look at this. Look at this damage. Oh my god. Crazy damage. And here, because of the pack hunter, I'm able to catch up to the enemy. Look at this. Huh. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn, I just killed the Vukong, which is so important because the Elder Dragon is up. And if the like the Evelyn is up to free Elder Dragon. This is free Elder Dragon. Get the Elder Dragon, right? It's absolutely free. Evelyn can just ult and smite it. There is no way that the enemy can steal it. No way at all. Right?
They did, the Evelyn did not use her ultimate. Uh, it's okay though. We can still get Baron. You know, it's it's okay. We can just finish the game with Baron. Can we? I don't, I don't actually. Like, it's. <laughs> this is what we have to do now. When the enemy took Elder Dragon, you have to take Baron and finish the game. If we don't finish the game with this Baron, then this game is going to be super hard to come back. Insanely hard. So we have to finish the game. How do we finish? 1-3-1. One, one. Push 3 lanes. Look at what my team is doing. Don't go in. Why are they going in? This is so stupid. They like Look, they're already at 50% HP now. It's so idiotic. If I had her now, I would pull it out of my head. Honestly. The Evelyn just died. So we're in a 4v5 situation and the enemy has Elder Dragon. This is so damn stupid. Like right now we can't do anything. Yeah, we can't do anything. We're just screwed to be honest. Like here, look at... I, I still have crazy damage but... It's, you know, we just can't do anything. Yeah. And I did my best this game. I did my best but honestly my team was really bad. Like, uh, you know, my team was actually really, really bad. I made some mistakes too, however, you know. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I talked about my mistakes and how to avoid them. Because that's very important on Vayne. <laughs> Here I got a little mad at Evelyn because, you know, she she wasted two very, very important objectives. She wasted that first Baron and the Elder Dragon. Oh, man. I'm full built. Like, I am literally full built Vayne. And we're still losing the game. However... If I get up, we can still win the game. That was actually beautiful. We can still win because I'm Vayne, right? Because Vayne is very, very strong. Even if the enemy has Elder Dragon, Vayne can still carry games. Because you're Vayne, you can still win the fight. It's going to be a little hard though because the enemies have, a, you know, the enemies have this true damage from the Elder Dragon. And yeah, it's definitely not going to be easy to win this game. So here, you know, I'm just getting myself prepared, getting the red buff. What we need to do now is just team fight. That's the only way we can win. We have the top lane turret and the mid lane turret. So we can put pressure in the top lane, which is going to be very nice for us. But then after that, in a situation like this, we have to team fight <clears throat> and not get caught. Like if we get caught again, we're just going to lose the game. We got caught so many times in this game already. Like we did fight so stupidly. And all we got to do is fight. Just fight. Five versus five. It, we're likely going to lose the fight. You know, this game is probably lost. But that's the best try that we, that we can give it. So, yeah. That's what we have to do. I'm just pushing this lane. You know, not. I don't want to have pressure. So, um, yeah. Like, my plan here was to try and get ourselves into a five versus four situation. Look at top lane. Look at top lane. Top lane is pushing. Now it's a five v four. And I pushed bot lane as well to, you know, to get to get pressure on these enemies. And if we can take a 5 versus 4, of course we have an advantage, right? So let's take a look at what's going to happen. Baron is spawning. And yes, the Jax is actually pushing top lane pretty hard. So the Fiora ha really has to take care of that. Fiora is very slow on taking care of the lanes. <clears throat> of course, you know, also in the late game, if you can get a 1v1 situation, take it. Because Vayne is broken in 1v1s. You win almost every 1v1. Against like an ADC or a mid laner. Vukong can be a little hard to 1v1 however. Because he has the knockups. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at what's happening here. This is a really really good fight for us. Very 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 nice fight. We really have to go now. Like This is our chance to win the game. Wow I took so much damage though. Damn. This is the, this is the Elder Dragon. This is the Elder Dragon guys. As you can see. Yeah, you know, we did a really good fight here, but the Elder Dragon is just too much and unfortunately we really cannot defend against them. And I did a really good job this game playing Vayne. However, I did make some mistakes, but unfortunately our jungler was really, really bad. So, you know, I still hope you guys learned a lot from this video and learned from my mistakes too. Um, I Yeah, it's a lost game, but I'm still uploading it, right? So, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep in mind, 1000 likes Ezreal video, so... You know, if you want to see Ezreal, make sure you like this video. Thir wow, video is almost 30 minutes long. So let's take a look at what my rating was and the damage and everything. Let's take a look. 
Wow, crazy. Okay. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye bye.